Hey, what's up? All right. Uh, some of the youth. I bet y'all remember me from Legacy Camp. I was that really awkward leader who just had the jokes. Yeah, I'm back. Um, and then some of you guys at Pack Room probably know me, probably don't. Yeah, what's up? Uh, yeah, I'm that awkward curly-haired girl that just walks around and gives you guys like really awkward smiles. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so, um, just a little bit about me before I pray us in. My name is Rhiannon. I'm from the Big Island. What's up? And I'm also from Pack Room Dorms. Squad up. Where are you guys at? Yee. Cool. Um, yeah. That's about it. I'm I'm praising. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for just setting this time aside uh, and that we will be able to receive more and understand you and your character more, God. Uh, I pray that you use me as a vessel, that it is your words and not mine, God, and that you just continue to bless this school, bless the youth and their lives and their families and their relationship with you personally. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I'm going to talk about honor. Yeah, there it is up there. <laughs> so, first of all, I'm going to give you guys a definition of honor. Uh, the noun is high respect and esteem and privilege, and the verb is regarded with great respect, fulfill an obligation, or keep an agreement. So, when I was praying and doing this message and writing things down, there's these are a few areas or whom in our lives that we should give honor to. So the first one is the man up above, God. Mm -hmm. So the scripture is, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength. Sorry, scratch that. And with all your soul and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 6.5. Uh, it's basically saying that you should love God with your everything and all of your being and just you're, you're everything right here. And there's a specific reason on why he put love me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Uh, because God loves us with his everything. All of his being that he like pours into us and he loves us and he never fails us. And it's just his all-encompassing being is put into us and he just loves us. But do we? No. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it does take all your heart to love God because sometimes your heart is drawn to the world or people or your own desires, and sometimes it takes all of your soul to love God because he resides in you and, you know, spirit check, do I love God? Yes. And sometimes it does take all your strength. Boy, oh boy, let me tell you. Because sometimes, you know, God does something and you don't understand. And you're like, dang, like, why'd you do that to me? Like, why are you doing this? And he's, like, standing on the side, like, it's because I love you. And sometimes it just takes all of your strength to be like, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to love you with all I got because you're my God. And just think of it as, like, your best friend. Like, you guys hang out. You guys talk to story. Uh, you guys do all these things together, and both of you guys, it's a mutual 110% effort. And when they do something for you or they give you advice, because you hold them in high respect, in high regard, oh my gosh, sorry, in high regard, you look at them with honor and love. And where does that all tie back to? It ties back to the heart, because everything starts from the heart. And then it will transfer from your heart, to your soul, to your strength, and an all-encompassing love for God. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, and, I mean, when we love somebody, don't we all honor them somehow or love and respect them somehow? So in a way to honor God, it's loving him with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our strength and giving him our everything, even though 
we fail him every day, whether it's something small or whether it's something big, we can still stand up and get back up and try again. And take Jesus, for example, homeboy Jesus, oh my gosh, when he was yeah, in Luke twenty two forty two, he was saying, my will and not yours. Because I'm going to give you guys a context thing. <laughs> because he, he was about to get taken away to be put on the cross to be crucified. And he was very scared. I'd be scared. Um, but he loved God enough to be like, hey, not my will but yours. Because I love and I honor you. And I want to respect you. And he also said, my will and your, your will and not my will because... He also loved and honored us, and that's why he put himself up there because he loved and honored us, and he gave us his everything, his body, his spirit. And so from honoring God, we're going to move into honoring authority, school, and leaders. I see y'all rolling your eyes. Me too. (laughs) That's hard, (laughs) for real. (laughs) Amen. Um, So the scripture is, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. That's heavy. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard to honor and love and respect your teachers, especially in high school. Because I understand some teachers are pretty whack, okay? But not the ones at Packram. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> advertising for Packram, what's up? Um, but for real, though, like it's very hard to give honor and respect to your teachers, especially if they're like, you're not vibing with them or they don't honor you back. But at the same time, God is all authority, yeah. But he put them and he established them there in order for you to learn something or gain wisdom from something or just just be there under authority because that is where he has put them. And disobeying those that were placed there correlates to disobeying God. And it says there in the scripture, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. I don't want to disobey God. It doesn't feel good. I don't feel good. But some of you guys, especially in high school, are probably like, oh my gosh, like why should I why should I do that? Like, why should I honor authority and all my schools and all my teachers? Because honor because it is honorable. We've all been through that struggle. Trust me, it's hard. You're gonna get through it and you're gonna understand because God is good and He'll He'll let you understand. And when you honor your school and your teachers and your leaders, you're honoring God. And then he's going to be so stoked because he's like, oh, my gosh, that's my daughter, yo. That's my son. He's so cool. He's following what I asked him. Amen. Blessings. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. And, I mean, also, like, don't forget uh, turning in your assignments and going to class. I mean... We still struggle with that, even in college. Me? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Mike Ward, that's what's up. That's what's up. I never missed any of your classes, though. So good, so good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Turn them all in on time, too. (laughs) On time. Love that class. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Amen. I ain't lying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, from authority, school, and leaders, we're going to take it to the household, which is your parents. Yeah, roll your eyes again. I get it. Me too. Uh, so, the scripture for that is Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that I may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Y'all see that promise in there about, like, long life? That's, like, the only commandment with a promise. Don't we want to be, like, 
living long and stuff. I do. I mean, not too long because, he, yeah, yeah, not too long. <laughs> this world is pretty whack sometimes. <laughs> but, I mean, long enough, you know, to, like, get grandchildren and whatnot, whatever. But, I mean, it's a long life, you know. <laughs> it's a promise with a long life because, you know, you're honoring your parents, the ones who brought you into this life, excuse me, you know, and I know sometimes it's hard to honor your parents because they do things to you or you don't necessarily agree with what they're saying or you just don't necessarily have that great of a relationship with them, but you were still placed in their care and you were still placed in their care for them to steward you and shepherd you in a way where you can go out into this world and praise Jesus even more. You know, I mean, we're not perfect. Do we obey our parents every day? <laughs> no. Jesus was the only one that was like, <laughs> yeah, you my dad. I'm going to do whatever you want. But the rest of us are like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. You know, I get it. Me too. Your dad's bugging out about you staying out too late, coming back home and whatnot. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, why are you, why are you ragging me on this? Because I love you, you know? And... Maybe if I can put it in this way, if you guys still have an issue with honoring and loving your parents, because it all ties back to the heart, you know, there is a Heavenly Father out there that craves a relationship with you and wants to love you and wants to honor you and wants a mutual thing as well. And I think when we dive deep into that and we get the full understanding of loving God and honoring God and just being all encompassed around his character, that we can actually put that into action with our own parents, no matter how hard it is. Hey, love them with all your strength, all right? <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good. And, I mean, your parents are your parents. Honor them, love them. They're not always going to be here, you know? That's what I learned, and that's what God kind of put on my heart just now. So we're going to take it on another deeper level. Don't roll your eyes again. We're going to go to yourself. Yeah. We're going to go to yourself. It's a little rough. 1 Corinthians 3.16-17 through is... Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for God's temple is sacred, and you together are that temple. Basically, all of us together are the body of Christ. We all have God residing in us, and all of us together are either the hands, the legs, the feet, and we move the kingdom forward, but also individually we are a temple because we have the living God and the highest king residing in us. And God's temple is sacred. I mean, we see it in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, like it was filled with cleanliness. You have to do all these, you know, ceremonies in order to go in and it just has to be upkept and always like clean it out, clean it out, clean it out, make it nice and clean. And, I mean, that's with us, too, because our spirits are the temple, and we don't want to litter our temple. We don't want to litter our spirits so that God is drowning in things that aren't actually supposed to be there. And, like, how can we honor God without honoring the bodies that he gave us? So, I'm going to give a little bit of a testimony <laughs> about myself. And it ties back to what Miles was saying about, you know, your identity and your value and your worth as a son and a daughter. This might sound, sound cliche. Bear with me. So a couple of Christmases ago, <laughs> 2016, kind of had a rough go. Girl got her heart broken. <laughs> we all been there. Um, and... I put my value and my worth in somebody rather than putting it in God. And when it was taken away, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, 
I don't have any value and I don't have any worth. So why should I honor myself? Because it's nothing. So I hit up all my friends. I was like, yo, every Christmas party you're going to, hit me up. We're going to do it. We're going to party. We're going to shot for shot, whatever. And I did. It was like every day or either every other day or every weekend, I would go out with my friends and I would go to parties and I would drink until I couldn't move or drink until I couldn't wake up and smoke and vape and whatnot and ties back to honoring your parents. I even lied to my parents about going to these parties. Don't lie to your parents. Sorry, mom and dad. I know you guys are on Facebook right now watching me. <laughs> Truth comes out. Um, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. <sighs> They go. They gonna talk to me about it during Christmas. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, but anyways, you know, like I was running around doing all these things and not understanding the fact that God was like sitting there and was like, "Yo, what are you doing? Like, why are you trashing my my temple? Why are you trashing yourself? You know, why are you trashing your spirit? Like, it's nothing." And even in the world today, like the struggle is super real like we got drugs sexual immorality um cutting depression suicidal thoughts our own desires and drunkenness and even more that i haven't listed but it makes it so hard for us to honor ourselves because in the world everybody's like oh yeah you know get drunk yolo let me tell y'all something yolo does not exist in the kingdom of god you only live once yeah, you only live once here, but you live, you only live in eternity, yo, in, in <laughs> you know, in the kingdom of God. You live for eternity, yo, like, you only live once, don't exist in the kingdom of God. I mean, that was, <laughs> that, that was, that was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that was funny. But you know what I'm saying? Like, the world is telling you, yeah, get drunk with your friends, you know, YOLO, or you know, you love that person so much, you think you're going to marry them or whatever. Have sex with them. Yeah, it's fine. You know, like, <laughs> or smoke weed, you know, like, let's, you know, let loose, like, smoke weed. You're going to have the best sleep of your life. And, oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, I guess if you want to litter your temple. But, let me, you know, and it also ties back into what Miles was saying when you honor yourself and you honor, honor those around you and you just honor every single part and aspect of what God has asked you to, including him, it also shows that you're the king's children. You know, you're a son of God or you're a daughter of God and you're royalty, you know? Like, even though you don't wear physical crowns or you have physical crowns, y'all do have crowns, you know? And... When we, when we see each other as royalty and even ourselves as royalty, don't we hold them in high regard? You know, like those, what are those people that got married, William and Harry, or he, whatever. No, not, not like that, but, you know, the two, the two brothers that got married recently, you know, that royal wedding. I don't know if you guys, like, to two different women, yeah. Um... <laughs> Please, God, forgive me. Oh, my God. The brothers, y'all know, whatever. But I'm saying, like, you hold them in high regard because you see them as royalty, right? They're walking around with their crowns and their little jewels on their jean jackets, you know, and she's walking around with that, that nice wedding gown. And you're like, oh, my gosh. Get it, queen? Yeah. Okay, but, like, what about you guys? Get it, queen? Get it, king? Like... Y'all are royalty, and you're the king's children. And when you look at it like that, you can hold each other and even yourselves in high regard. And even the people at your school are the king's children, or even your mom and dad are the king's children. So hold them in high regard, too, and respect them. You know, it all comes back <coughs> in a full circle. Cool. So I have a challenge. I got I got this 
from my church because my church is doing challenges every week. So I decided, why don't I challenge you guys too? This is fun. Um, find the places where you struggle with honoring, whether it be with your parents or with school or something that I didn't even bring up either. And do it for yourself and for God, not for any other person. Like, if your parents are bugging out <laughs> about you coming home late and you're like, oh my gosh, like, stop jumping down my throat. Sit back, relax, remember, honor your parents because you want to live long. Or, you know, like, you keep getting detention or something at school and you're like, oh my gosh, this teacher is so whack. Like, I can't. Like, all she does is, like, jump down my throat and she's always giving us this whack homework and blah, blah, blah. Hey, sit down, take a seat, take a deep breather. Remember, you're royalty. Do it with honor. Do it for God because God has placed them there. Or even yourself, you know, you struggling with partying or struggling with anything that is outside of the will of God and you want to kind of, like, take yourself out of it and put yourself in God's will, just remember, honor yourself because you are a child of God. And you do wear crowns. They're pretty nice crowns, too. So that's where I close off with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to pray us in. No, I'm going to pray us out. Sorry. I'm going to pray us out. Give you all a break. <sighs> thank you, Jesus, for this time. Uh, I thank you for just blessing all of the Packard students and the youth that have showed up. Uh, I also pray that if any of them are curious or if any of them have not received Jesus and they want to learn more about deepening a relationship or even starting a relationship or any of us that are struggling with honoring any part of our lives, God, uh, I just pray that you just bless them and give them the courage to step out for you boldly and to do your will and to understand you in a more deeper and more intimate way as a son and a daughter of the Most High and being able to honor those around them and even themselves. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.